Hello there and welcome back to another review here on the Master Moldy channel. It's Sunday already, these weeks are flying by and thank you so much for the support on the last reviews. Last week we did touch on the X-Wing, the recent one before the one coming out August the 1st and honestly I think that was the best X-Wing so it makes sense to follow up with what is in my own opinion the very best TIE Fighter from 2012. One of my first sets, one of my early LEGO Star Wars sets, I think the first set I got, which you all know if you stayed around a while on this channel, is a 2009 Clone Walker Battle Pack. And I wasn't getting too much Lego back then, let alone Lego Star Wars specifically. It was mainly City. So this is still one of my first sets, even though it came out three years later and I've still got it built to this day, which I think just goes to show how good it is. Now, I have made a few modifications, so I will need to find the original cockpit. But before we take a look at the set, Let's get it weighed and see if it's worth its weight in Lego bricks. Now, I haven't actually changed the batteries in these scales since the last video, so I will need to do that at some point. But if we put the TIE Fighter and all three figures, this is the original build for the TIE Fighter. You can see I have switched up any modifications I have made. We can see that it weighs 438 grams. And that's actually quite a surprising number. If you remember the X-Wing we did from 2021 last year cost 12 pence per gram. And let me show you the results. So Luke's X-Wings at the top, we got the Desert Skiff as well, also at 12 pence per, or 12 pence per gram. Yeah, I saw the pound sign and got really confused there. And the X-Wing, is even cheaper. The TIE Fighter, sorry, 11 pence per gram. That is an absurd amount of value for the sets. But it's very similar, 2012, 2017, 2021. So at what point did LEGO start charging more for Star Wars? Because by 2012, the world knew about the Disney takeover, so that would have been a great chance to have put a premium tax on it. But then by 2017, we were getting a movie every year and still no extra tax. By 2021, Disney had started with the Disney Plus shows like The Mandalorian and we ended up stopping getting Star Wars movies and start getting shows. And there still wasn't a change from that initial price in 2012. Now, I'm sure in 2012, there definitely was some sort of jump with the Disney announcement. Perhaps Lego sets were closer to the City Lions and other themes like Ninjago and Monkey Kid before the Disney takeover. But Lego Star Wars managed to stay at a steady price for the best part of that decade from 2012 to 2021. And now all of a sudden, most of these sets are priced double their weight. Is it because of the quality of minifigures we're getting is a bit more than it used to be. And speaking of, let's take a look at those minifigures in the TIE Fighter set. Now, when looking at these minifigures, I want you to remember that this set is over 12 years old. And I think some of these minifigures still hold up to sets that come out now. I mean, this droid doesn't have any back printing, but the front is still as detailed as any non-R2-D2 droid that's in production today. I wonder how long it's gonna be before we get some back printing, it's a nice droid. Funnily enough, with how many Death Star droids LEGO have done, this is the one they've given us in the new droid factory. But we also have a TIE Pilot, and it's not as detailed as any of the figures we'd get today. Of course, we do have the UCS TIE Pilot as well that comes with that very special arm printing, which, of course, we're not going to see here back in 2012. There were arm printed minifigures, there were arm printed minifigures decades before this set come out. But for Star Wars, they were really exclusive to UCS sets and hadn't come in any cheap sets like Rex. We also get a face underneath with a ski mask and there is no back printing on, I think, any of these minifigures, which they didn't really need it at the time and Lego have started doing it for these figures more recently. Once again, we do have a, another Imperial. I believe this is meant to be a gunner and I'll actually try and put the values at the bottom of the screen. But this minifigure is really cool because if you turn around the head, dual-sided heads, yes, we did have them all the way back in 2012. They're not that new. You can see that it's got its blast shield, like a visor down over his eyes, which I think is really, really cool. And something that hasn't really been included in any of the more recent minifigures. Once again, no arm printing, 
and no back printing. But this last minifigure is my favorite and one that continues to be on my Lego minifigure display to this day. Now, because of the hat, which doesn't have any sort of Imperial insignia on like the newer ones, there is no dual sided face, but there is actually back printing on this minifigure, which I have completely forgotten about. But the torso is really, really cool because what you can do with this minifigure is if you replace the legs for the brand new dual molded gray and black legs, well, they're brand new compared to this set at least, which you can pick up on the pick a brick wall, it just makes the officer look so much better. And this could be a minifigure that comes in a set today. In fact, if you were to take off the head and the hat and replace it with a head with the likeness of Admiral Yularen. This works very well as a custom Admiral Yularen minifigure and you can see that it doesn't look much different to the one that comes with the UCS banner. So you can tell that there is a difference and this isn't the official one but it looks great on my minifigure display. But I will return the minifigure to its original state for the process of this video. Just know that as soon as this video is over I will be putting Yularen back on my minifigure display. But now taking a closer look at the Lego set itself, you can see that this cockpit is unlike any cockpit we'd get nowadays. It's such a big and bulky cockpit, but there is enough room on the interior. There's actually quite some room. You could definitely squeeze two minifigures in here if you had to, such as Ezra and Zeb. If you're trying to recreate the iconic rebel scene of them, both squeezing in that stolen TIE fighter. But once you've fidgeted around and got the TIE pilot in the seat, the controls can actually stay out front as you put the cockpit back down and over. And I do quite like the design of this cockpit because it does remind me of the new one that came with the TIE bomber. In fact, we can pop off this cockpit piece and we will be going over modifications towards the end of this video. But you can add the brand new tire bomber cockpit onto this tire and make it match up to all of the newer editions, including the tire fighter coming out August the 1st. And the reason you might want to keep this tire fighter in your collection, well, you've probably seen it, it's probably either in the tight war thumbnail, is because this tire is minifigure scale to a 1 to 45 scale, which makes the average minifigure 180 centimeters tall when they are scaled up. So if you are a fan of minifigure scout, then this model is definitely perfect for you as there's only one other model that has come close to this and that is the TIE Fighter we got from the Solo line of sets. But you can see that the Solo TIE Fighter is actually a bit thinner. I think it's about four or five studs too thin in its width this distance between the two wings needs to be four or five studs wider for it to actually be minifigure scale, but I do believe the wings of both of these models are practically identical, though I still prefer the thinner design of these lines on the older TIE Fighter. So let me know in the comments which one of these two ties you prefer. Do you prefer the older style, which is more accurate and in my opinion definitely has the better wings, or do you prefer the solo version that definitely has the cockpit over the older one. Back in 2012, I would have swooshed this thing around four hours and it's such a swooshable model, you can give it a solid shake and besides a bit of rattling in the wings, this model really isn't going anywhere and that makes it the perfect toy to be played with. And there are also some flick fire missiles at the bottom, which if I can find them, do fire out really as far as you are able to flick them. You can see that I didn't successfully fire the second one on the first attempt, but they work better as bombs if you were to swoosh down and drop them over your minifigures and perhaps try and take them out one by one. So earlier on, I mentioned some modifications and you have seen this tie with the newer variation of the cockpit introduced in the tie bomber. And I think it does look pretty cool and I'm tempted to try and part out the pieces needed for this modification. But if you remove the whole Technic connection at the front and replace that with a 1x4, you can actually get one of the slightly less newer cockpit pieces, which you would have seen on the 2021 TIE Fighter, which we will be looking at next week. But I've actually taken mine from 
Yoda's Starfighter. But before we are able to connect it to the bottom, you can't connect a bar to a bar. So we are going to be removing not just this middle piece, but also the two Technic Flick Fire missiles on the outside. Now, the Technic Flick Fire missiles are completely optional to remove. That will be for a change we make in a moment. And you also want to remove this combination of plates and the 2x3 wedge brick underneath as we are going with a whole new support system which looks a bit like this includes some rounded slopes and is really easy to put together but just makes the bottom of the tire also look a bit rounded off like the rest of it now we won't be closing that up just yet because i have got some of these newer flick fire missiles with slopes on the side it's a similar technique to the one used in the 8080 playset and these also just clip on each side of them. And as I said, completely optional. If you're not a fan of flick fire missiles, you can have them removed. Taking a look back at the cockpit, we do want to do something about that interior control panel. Because if I pop off the whole piece, you can see it's just a trans 1x2 red grill, which doesn't look the best. So instead of just having that simple tile on it, I've actually designed this whole system to resemble the same targeting computer and all the other controls we see in the squadrons game which i think looks a lot more realistic to what we see in the movies and in universe and that slots just in there and now we can close it all up having the newly designed tie now it's no question that there are a few gaps and this cockpit is a lot flatter than the new tire bomber one so perhaps i'll warm up to this at some point and we could also hollow out the middle using the new design from the brand new TIE Fighter. But only time will tell, and for now, this is how I will be displaying it. Of course, we can't forget about loading them flick fire missiles, which, if I'm honest, just fire so much better than the older ones. So would this TIE still hold up in today's LEGO market? Honestly, I think the lack of detail compared to some of the new sets would definitely raise a few eyebrows but in terms of price this is amazing value i guess that's where the extra detail does come in all the time that the designers spend putting on all the little slopes i mean this set definitely has its fair share of small slopes but there's just so much more detail and greebling that goes into new sets but i also don't think the price gap between this set and say the brand new one coming out august the first should be as big as it is because of the tie fighters are getting smaller we're only seeing an increase in price and that still doesn't quite make sense so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below drop a like on this video if you did enjoy and subscribe for more reviews coming every single sunday and check out all the videos on screen now may the bricks be with you always